So last Sunday I did a stream in which I tried to Liberty boot a ThinkPad X200 and failed miserably. <laughs> Looks like two. <sighs> Even though I did manage to Liberty boot the ThinkPad on the stream, it was quite fun. And shortly after the stream, I actually managed to install Liberty boot on ThinkPad X200 successfully. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually install Libreboot on ThinkBet X200 and not embarrass yourself in front of 300 people. Let's get started. <laughs> so first of all, of course, what is Libreboot even? Libreboot is an open source BIOS replacement which you can install on x86 computers, including ThinkPad X200. Now, for a lot of technical reasons, you can't actually install Liberboot on new hardware because Intel changed the way they ship into management engine firmware when they introduced the Intel Core processors. X200 is one of the most favorite uh, laptops from ThinkPad line for a lot of people. And one of those reasons is exactly the fact that you can install a fully open source firmware on this laptop. So first and foremost, it's very important to have the right equipment to install Liberboot on ThinkPad X200. And this is where it gets kind of tricky because a lot of guides online suggest uh, doing it using Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone Black or Bus Pirate. And I'm gonna tell you that you shouldn't use those tools to install Liberboot. First of all, if you use BeagleBone Black or Bus Pirate, you will need an external power source, which adds like new layer of complications for you. If you use Raspberry Pi, it's a little bit easier, but Raspberry Pi is kind of pricey for what it is. If you don't already have one, or if you can't borrow it from someone, you will need to buy one. And a Raspberry Pi kit, which is the board itself, micro SD card, power source, could set you back for about 50 euros or 30 if you buy used. What you should use instead is CH341A SPI programmer. Those are basically ubiquitous, you can find them anywhere on Amazon, eBay, AliExpress. They're very cheap too, I think they're about 10 euros. They're also supported out of the box on Mac OS and Linux, you don't need to install any drivers, and you can just plug one into your computer's USB port and use it without any like extra hassle with like putting files on your Raspberry Pi, putting files out of your Raspberry Pi, etc. So yeah, for the programmer, go with the CH341A. That's, that's the best choice in my opinion. Now you would also need a clip. Most X200s come with a 16 pin SPI chip. Yours might come with an 8 pin, so I advise you to take your laptop apart and check. Your chip should look something like that if it's 16 pin and something like that if it's 8 pin. But in the majority of cases it's actually 16 pin, so yeah. Now contrary to popular belief, you don't need one of those fancy Pomona clips. You know, they're overpriced in my opinion and you don't really need one to successfully install Liberboot on your hardware. What you should buy instead is one of these. This is what I personally used and this is what I had success with, so you should probably go for that. Now if you're especially paranoid and if you want to absolutely make sure that everything works right from the first try, you could buy a Pomona clip. I personally think it's an overkill and I think that you could do with one of those cheap Chinese clips, but your mileage may vary of course. And the last thing you will need is a pack of female to female jumper cables. Now your clip will arrive kind of looking like that, you know, connected to this adapter board. And what you want to do is you want to tear off all those wires from the clip, just leave it naked like that. And I'll explain why. The thing is those wires that come with the clip, they're way too long. And this is exactly the reason why I failed to install Liberboot on the stream. I couldn't get a reliable read with this clip and someone actually suggested to me on Telegram after the stream that I should shorten the wires. So what I did instead is basically I cut off all the wires, I removed them from the clip, and instead I used jumper wires to connect them to the CH341A. So basically this is how the connection diagram would look like, this is how you should wire it up. The extra pins that are not used will kind of go in the way. So what you could do is you could just bend them with pliers and then just cut them off with the cutters. But be sure to protect your eyes because they just kind of ricochet in all the directions possible and you could really hurt yourself. So after you connected the clip to the programmer, as shown on the diagram, you need to fit the clip on the chip. It's pretty easy, you just kind of align it with the pins on the chip. Once you feel like the connection is good, that it's just sitting there tight, then you need to connect your programmer to the computer. But pay attention here because you should only connect USB programmer after you fit the clip, not the other way around. Because in that case, you might fry the chip. So anyway, once the clip is on the chip, and once your program is connected by USB, you need to install a program called FlashROM. FlashROM is the program that we're going to use 
to flash our libreboot image. It should be present in your distributions repositories by default. I've used Ubuntu, Arch and Fedora with Flash ROM and it should be there. On macOS I think it should be available in either Brew or Mac ports, you should check for yourself. So once you have Flash ROM installed, we need to read the old BIOS image from the chip so that we have a reliable backup which we can restore to in case something goes wrong. This is how a command looks like. You should repeat it twice with different file names and then run diff file name 1 file name 2. The output should be empty, it shouldn't say the binary files differ. In any case, if it does say that, then you did something wrong and you should disconnect everything and repeat the process from scratch. While you're reading the chip, Flash ROM is also going to output the size of the chip, so be sure to remember that. It could be either 4, 8 or 16 megabytes, and it's very important. So once you're done with that, once you got two reliable reads that don't differ from each other, you're ready to flash Libreboot. Download the Libreboot archive from this website. There should be two folders, Grub and CBIOS. I personally use Grub, but you could also use CBIOS. So in the Grub folder, you see a lot of files and you need to pick a file that corresponds to your laptop model and your chip size. You still remember the chip size that I told you to remember from the last step, right? So in my case, it was an eight megabyte chip, so this is what I downloaded. Now, once you've downloaded the archive, unpack it, and you'll see a bunch of files which correspond to your keyboard layout. I personally chose QWERTY, but you can pick whichever one you want. Then open the terminal in this folder and type this command. The name of the file is gonna be different, of course, depending on which keyboard layout you picked. And after Flashroom has reported the successful flashing, you're done, congratulations. You now have a fully open source laptop without any blobs in the firmware without the Intel management engine spyware. So yeah, feels good, right? <laughs> now, one more thing that I should mention here is every Libreboot ROM comes with a generic MAC address, which shouldn't be a problem when you're only running one Libreboot uh, device on the network, which most of the time that will be the case, I imagine. But when you have multiple devices in the same network with the same MAC address, that might cause a problem. So what you should probably do after installing an operating system on your freshly liberated laptop is generate the new MAC address. You can read more on how to do that here. So yeah, that's it. Uh, once again, for those who are watching the stream, sorry for not being able to get this right live, but finally it's done. Laptop is going to be on the way to its new owner soon. So yeah, happy end. <laughs> I would like to thank Joseph O, Mitchell Valentino, Christoph, Neuro Gamer, Catherine DC, and everyone else who supports my channel. Man, the list of those names is getting way too long. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.